watch Pinups, Cool Cats, and Comics on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. <laughs> Hello, oh, and welcome hey. to another episode of Pinup School Cats and Comics. I am yeah. Dennis, this is my co-host, Teresa. Hi, how are you? I'm going through a change. <laughs> uh, I'm as disappointed as you are to not see her here, to be honest with you. Yes, unfortunately, Teresa is not feeling well. We found out last minute. Um, but we <laughs> have Paul Bond on, so we can't so, go wrong. So I'm going to be here the whole show, whether you like it or not. I was yeah. supposed to be just a guest, but now I'm co-host slash guest. Well, we keep our guests on the whole time anyway. We, oh, you know? uh, yeah. All right. We focus on them. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, basically our format is we assimilate to the guests that we have on. Tonight we have a very funny comedian. I hope he shows up. That'll be great. Uh, yes, yeah. hopefully he shows up any second now. But he's internationally known, I would say. He oh, performs all over the place yeah. uh, from here to... Have you been to California? I know you've been to yeah. Vegas. So from, yeah. from coast I to coast. I did film more in California. With Brewer, and we did uh, we performed with Metallica up in the balcony. That's, oh, that's cool where that was. was. <laughs> okay, that was California. They were watching us. So from coast to coast, he's a, he's a very funny comedian. Uh, so let's wrap up last week. We want to thank Fat Jay for coming in. Uh, we had a good time with him. And uh, next week, I'm trying to get David Weiss on. I'm just waiting for an answer. I don't know if you ten ten David. Yes, ten ten. David, very funny comedian. Love ten the guy. ten wins. You ever hear Rich Walker's joke about ten ten wins? 10-10 uh, doesn't win, it ties. Good, good anyway, 10-10 prize. <laughs> uh, and funny enough, you mentioned Rich Walker. That's where we met at the brokerage uh, class. Oh, that okay. We did there. So, I did not know that. And uh, I'm touching my mic. I'm awful. Please, I thought it was this. my glasses hanging. This is the first time. Yeah, first time, <laughs> with the, first time with the mic. But uh, let's go through our sponsor first, and then we'll get into our show. Sure. Uh, so we want to give it up to Frank Zambuto, who is watching live right now at the Irish Pub playing darts uh, he works for Kayla Logistics Kayla Logistics where your business is our priority moving products you use every day across the country and around the world contact Frank Zambuto for all of your domestic and international logistic projects Frank has over 20 years experience working with many name brand companies in the apparel cosmetics as seen on TV and electronic industries for trucking air and ocean cargo on all seven continents all you need is one solution to all Cool Cat listeners, just mention our show, and Frank will offer a free cost and transit time analysis for all your cargo. When cost and time matter, we deliver Frank Zambuto and Kayla Logistics, where your business is our priority. And you can reach Frank at his direct line at 347-536-3933, or email him at frank at kaylalogistics.com. And I know you know Frank. I know Frank. You finally got to meet him at the uh, finally, event. Finally, at a benefit, yeah. And, uh... You know, we'll get into everything you do, but since we're talking about Frank and benefits, I know you uh, do a lot yes. for charity, and you are having I'm, a show this week at Friday? I'm doing two charities this weekend. It's two uh, of them. Yeah, I'm doing uh, Friday night. It's going to be at Round 2. It used to be called uh, Knockouts. It's okay. in Bohemia on uh, Vets Highway. It's a hang. It's a bar, and we're raising money for my rescue group, uh, the Adoption Center, and uh, we have a bunch of comics on the show. I will be closing out the show. There will be raffles, 50-50, bada-bing, bada-boom. And uh, that's on Friday night. And then uh, Sunday, I got something very special I'm doing for the vets. Not veterinarians, on like on Friday, but for right. the vets. Uh, it's called a Walk with Frank, and it's taking place at the Bolton Center. And uh, this is a war vet who suffered from a post-traumatic stress disorder, and it's about homeless vets. And what he's going to do, Frank, is go to walk. He's going to walk from Buffalo, New York, back to Long Island. Wow. And he's going to do a documentary interviewing homeless vets on the street and, uh, and to make uh, America aware of this major problem that we have. Um, so and we're raising money this Sunday at the Bolton Center for that documentary. So it's a very important thing. Uh, Sunday, the 17th at 4 p.m., through 6.30 p.m. Uh, I will be your MC, host, and comedian. I'll be the thread in the show. It's going to be a variety type of show, though. It's going to have uh, different types of acts in it. Jazz, there's going to be uh, some dancing, there's going to be, you know, comedy. Of course. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So that's the Bolton Center on Sunday from 4 to 6.30 p.m. So it's an early night. Okay. 
And I uh, just want to give a shout out. Hey, Frank's checking in. He is we're being watched live right now. <gasps> the Irish pub in Baldwin while they're oh shooting darts, so that's cool. Yeah, I saw that he, he posted that. Yeah, Melissa, what's going on? Larry V. Uh, what's happening? V, if you could put up Paul's link for the cats. Uh, he, Frank's already got you 100 bucks from the bar. He what? Yeah. Really? Well, I have Not a kidding. PayPal. He could do, go through PayPal. Uh, I don't have an actual uh, uh, oh, there's no fundraiser up okay. right now. Um, but PayPal is P is in Paul, A is in Apple, C is in car, H is in hammer, and B-O, like Bond, B-O, at AOL.com. If you want to donate to my rescue, patchbo at AOL.com. That's right, AOL. I'm still, I'm hanging on to AOL. <laughs> All my business cards say AOL, so that's what it states. Do you still have MySpace, too? No, I don't have MySpace. <laughs> I have, yeah, you're going to be, in five years from now, Facebook is going to be obsolete. It is. You're not kidding. And I'll be the only guy on Facebook. I actually, that's part of one of my jokes, because I talk about, you know, the age thing, you know, yeah. as we were doing the workshop. And it's funny, because there are kids now saying Facebook's for old people, because their parents are on it. So this new generation is moving so to what? things like TikTok and, and TikTok. whatever else. Yeah, TikTok. So Facebook is now becoming passe. I don't. I don't think so. But anyway. Um, well, I don't think anyone thought MySpace was going to go anywhere either at the time. So. Right. In right. the AOL chat rooms, there was there was nothing better. Now oh they don't no, even exist absolutely. Anymore, so. Well, it was all new. It was all exciting, and then uh, and then came Zuckerberg. Yeah. Who still can't figure out that when you do a Facebook Live, you got to flip the picture. So what a what a dumbass! It, every time I do a Facebook Live and it's facing me, and I'm saying, "Hey, what's going on?" Everything behind me is in reverse. I'm like, "Don't you realize we want to see what we're yeah the people we're talking to?" And it does throw you off because it does. You just don't know what's going on. From and I do have a good side of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have no good side. Uh, Jeff checking in. He said, "Great to see you. Glad you're out there doing your thing for your friends without a voice." Yes. Hey, well, Jeff. Without a voice. Absolutely. Uh, and it's true. Uh, see, I know it's tough right now, and, and the last couple of charity things we tried on Facebook were tough because there's so many out there right now. Yeah, there I know is. you could donate your birthday and everything. And, and here's my take, and it's my own personal take. I don't speak for anybody. I have, I don't want to say I have a problem with all the big charities, right. but I stopped donating to a lot of them because you start hearing bad things about things that they're Yeah, doing. I've heard. And, Stealing and it's money, it very... doesn't go where it's supposed to and everything else. So too I, much red tape. Yeah. Uh, two charities I, I always tried to give to was um, Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just went live Again, on your sorry, Facebook. Sorry, it's the first time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and um, I used to give to uh, the Wounded Warrior Foundation. Yeah, I heard something about but that, But I've heard too. bad things about that. And you don't, you don't know what's true or not anymore. But I, what I did was I changed recently, and I'd rather give direct to somebody. I know what Paul does with the money. Yes. I'd rather take money out of my pocket and hand it right to him or donate through a PayPal. Or... And it's, uh, it goes, there's no red tape. It goes right to the cause. Right. Like, for instance, we acquired $480 worth of vet bills <laughs> last week like that. And that's how uh, I just posted on, uh, on the Facebook Live. So okay. they can go to the Yeah, PayPal. he did that too. So. Oh, what a nice person. He's on person. top of things. <laughs> All right. So uh, so what's new and exciting with Dennis? Uh, not much. I just also want to give a shout out because I always oh. forget. Uh, the show right before us yes. is In the Cage with Cyclone. If you like any fighting sports, mm. whether it's boxing, wrestling, MMA. hockey, MMA, all that stuff, he covers all that, talks about it every week. It's a great oh, show. Oh, cool. Sorry. And, <laughs> First day with my phone. <laughs> Such a so definitely check his show out. Although, like and share all the shows here. Uh, check out all the shows on Strong Island Television because there's a lot of good shows on here. As you know, you've been on uh, yes. here before. I've been on uh, Laughter Saves Lives a few times. Right. So, And like and share our show, obviously, in our Facebook page. And Ta-da! That. So what's been going on with me a lot is work. Just work. See, right yeah. before, just he just witnessed. before we came on, he got a call yeah. to go to work right after this. So right from here, I got to shoot home, change, and go to work. Uh, the struggle is real. Wow. Because there's so much money in comedy that uh, I oh, have to. <laughs> I know. You know. I don't have it's to such a you. struggle. Especially at my level of infancy. Yeah, and you know, guess what? This, it doesn't get no any money. easier at yeah. my level. It just You got to reinvent yourself. It's about asses and seats. And, yeah. And I've been working on a, uh, a new press kit. And new promo, so that when you go to um, my YouTube page, Paul Bond Comedy, I have brand new clips okay. from a DVD that I can't sell for 
for legal reasons. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was such an off. It's done, but you know. <laughs> but I put up uh, clips from the DVD. You'll see it. Uh, the stuff you haven't seen from my show and stuff I just winged that night. So, wow. Yeah. So it's uh, it's up there on Paul Bond Comedy, and uh, on YouTube. And thank you, Frank. He just sent a hundred dollars. And thank you to the Irish Pub. <sighs> Thank you, Frank. You guys are awesome. Frank's uh, always there for yeah, me. Yeah, Frank. You you're always there for me. Uh, Ver Veronica, 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 Veronica. If you want to, Veronica. Yes, always there for me, and Teresa, of course. And she's who's not, not here for you today. She's not here. I was just going to say, who's <laughs> not here for me today? So, but anyway. uh, I just did a show last week for the first time at the Greenwich Village Comedy Club. Oh, thanks to John Butera. Uh, that was great. It was a lot of fun. It was cool to be. In the area, I don't know if any of you guys watch Crashing. I'm sure you do. Yeah. It's uh, it's a show about, a, I guess, an up-and-coming comic who's just doing the circuit at the Pete time. Pete Holmes, right? Yes. And it, <clears throat> he's at the Grizzly Pear a lot, at the Comedy Cellar, uh, off the wagon. I was right in the heart of all that, so it was kind of cool to be... All right. Walk past these places to go to the Grand Village. Comedy yeah, Club no, it is, it is. It's cool. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting show. It's kind of real. You know. I noticed that, like, and again, I have nowhere near the level of experience in the business as you, obviously, but I see some of the stuff is, like, very true to life, mm -hmm. and some of it's just, there's no way somebody gets that lucky right off the bat. Yeah, well, it, it, they got to make it interesting, that's yes. why. You know, it's just, it's just show, nonetheless. Right. It's not a documentary. Right. So, they got to make it interesting. But yeah. it does show the struggle, like, you know, how, you know, usually it doesn't happen within the season where you're barking on the street, next thing you know, you're doing this college tour and yeah. going on tour with Artie Lang, but, <laughs> yeah. you know. That's not happening. It, that's not so real to life, but it is real, the struggle, like, they have to go out there. You want a set, doesn't matter if you're funny or not. How many mm -hmm. people are you going to put in the seats? That's that's all they really care about, at not least really. in the beginning. I don't know. John DeCrosta, hey, look at that. <laughs> My buddy from L.A. is watching. Kind of real, not at all. Ugh. I, I see his point because, again, it's just two things happen way too easily yeah. for this guy. Yeah. Which, I, I, well, I don't, maybe it, it does happen. It was to like somebody. that movie with Tom Hanks and, and, and uh, I was going to say, uh, Sally Field. You know, all of a sudden she's an overnight success because she went to like five different clubs and people are like, oh, right. 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 it's not that easy. No. It's not. You see, what we do up there, it, people think they can do. So that, the hecklers think they're funnier than the comic. It never works out well for you, so just shut the fuck up. How about that? All right? That's number one. I said, fuck. Is that bad? That's fine. That's two. Anyway, um, but the people in the audience seem to think that this is easy. What we do is easy. Ever since the age of YouTube, oh, I could be funny. Y yeah, do it at your house. Do it at a party. In the meantime, I came here with a show. <laughs> Let me do my show. That's all. And that's the problem now is because anybody could be a star. Because all you need is a phone, a Facebook Live, a YouTube, like you said, and, and boom, you're out there. And, and we you... don't get lockers. That's hysterical. We don't get lockers as comics. Like, yeah, we don't. It's not like a, you're, you're checking into the fitness center. Right. Hey, here's my locker. I can't remember my combo. Uh, that's, yeah, that's what they have on crashing. They got lockers. I, not, that's not real. I don't know what happened there. I just got Cra going speaking of crashing, going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just crashed. So, so anyway, a big hi to John DeCrosta. Uh, he's a funny. Talk about funny comics. Um, he is one of the best in the business. He he's what you call. If, if I had two words to describe John, and this is the biggest compliment. First of all, I can watch him every time he goes on, and I laugh just as hard. Infectiously funny. That's it. Once you start laughing, you're never going to stop. Yeah, that's my buddy that. John. Because I obviously I trust your opinion on these and things. up he knows what that means, um, <laughs> um, but a great a great special on Netflix if I could say I just watched a new stand stand up Ray Romano, I heard that was really Ray good. Ray Romano I haven't it out special yet, is funny, and it's raw. It's he curses like you you never really? want to see Ray curse. Would never expect that from Ray, and it's minimal, but he he definitely he's definitely more real than he's ever been. Okay. In this special, a lot of shit about his wife that wow. you never heard. A lot of stuff about his kids, and uh, it was shot at the Comedy Cellar in two different sections. And what was cool about it is they didn't know he was coming to film. The audience right. had no idea. He basically canceled whatever show for a half hour to go in and tape his stand-up comedy special, and then did it again. 
Okay. Uh, so the audience was surprised. He goes, ah, this is either going to work or it's not, you know. And uh, he was great. So I noticed a lot of big names are coming back to the stand-up circuit. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's a good sign. Yeah. It means that it is in demand again, people going. And I, I noticed that even from uh, doing my shows, people yeah. want to laugh again. Yeah, it, yeah. It's very tough. And Jerry Seinfeld said it because he, he's been going around again. He said he won't do the colleges because they're just way too PC now. Yeah. And he's not even like a, a controversial comic. Right. So for him to say that... Most people wouldn't be able to handle that circuit then. So it is good. Hopefully that's a sign that maybe yeah. things will change and comedy can get back to being comedy. I hope so. Um, what I do hope most of all is somebody comes up with a stand-up comedy show for veteran comics like myself who are still out there doing it. And, uh, and we get recognized and it's not just the kids in Manhattan who are who, oh, all the angst about their apartments and whatnot. Um, we're... We're road, I mean, road warriors. We've done everything from Vegas to Atlantic City to, 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 to ships to resorts. And, uh, and that shit's funny, man. Somebody wake up. Catch on to the idea that us older guys are still fucking funny and we still got something to say. And I will say that firsthand because he is the reason why I had an interest in startling comedy in the first place because I just thought you were hysterical. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I enjoyed your comedy. And then there was a point in me that said... Not that I can do this, but I want to do this. I want to try it. Or at least try it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny because we, we were discussing the other day again, too, the first time at your workshop, which right. I want you to promote as well. Right. Uh, I went in there completely green and had no idea why I was there five minutes in. But the, the 20 minutes you gave me, one-on-one -on -one in the kitchen, cool. got me to where I am today. Cool. Which is that I had to rush right after the show to go to work. But yeah. But still, you know. Yeah, but, you know, um... What I provide at the workshop is just guidance. I don't try to change anybody when they come to the workshop. I want you to become more of what, who you are and who you think you want to be because there's no sense. And there, there, are, there are comedy workshops where they go, oh, no, um, you should be this. And it's like, no, I, I came here with a certain thing that I want to do. Don't change that. Hone that. Right. Make it better than what it is right now. That's why I'm here. You know, and that's what I, I try to do. I try to give everybody the uh, tools to get themselves to the next level. Or at least get over some major hurdles that I had to suffer through in the beginning because there were no real classes or workshops around. No, you had to do it the hard way. You just had to go out to open mics and figure it out. But Frank, if you want to know what he gave me for 20 minutes, you got to pay the money and go to the workshop. <laughs> Then you can you can have it too. Sean, Sean McFloss just says, it's not that kind of workshop. Are you still making toys at the workshop? Now I do gotta say because I've been to quite a few and I've seen many different comics in there yeah. over the last few years. And I will say this: you do bring out that person in them. It's not like you're you're pushing you on them or directing them. Like you said, right. you're saying this is your voice. Try it this way. Do yeah, this. That's just, all. Honing their skills. Check it out. Because when comics first start, start writing, and, it, and it's a, it's a, and it's an actual thing that we all do. We've all guilty. We put more words than necessary to make the joke happen because right. we're trying to fill up time. You know, it's like, well, maybe they're not going to get it unless I say this phrase and that and that. It's like, no, 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 no. Give the audience a little bit of credit, and I do mean a little, because <laughs> you don't want them to totally lose the joke, but at the same time, give them something to. You know. it, it, it's true, and I can tell you. And even though you gave me the advice, and I thought I was listening to it, I remember my first contest. I had five minutes. That, you know, each comic had five minutes to do the material, and right. I think I probably had six minutes or seven minutes. I tried to cram right. into that five minutes because I was just like, "Well, if this jokes don't work, I want to do that joke. If that don't, joke doesn't right. work, I want to jump right into this one." And I thought I was doing well on stage until I watched it afterwards. I'm like, "Man, I rushed right through. <laughs> yeah. I spoke over the laughs, and you looked down." Uh, that was your biggest problem when your first game. Your first game. My first game, yeah, but the first, first contest, I don't know if I looked down so no, much. No, you didn't look down. But um, I, I we just... We broke you of that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just... The, there wasn't enough confidence in my set or whatever. Now, the second contest... Yeah, you were, were more interested on, in getting the words out. Right. And getting it done. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's, I'm getting close to the end. Let's and, go. And it seems, you know, I'm sure... You, well, I don't know if you still feel the same way, but right. when I first got up there, like when you end a joke... 
even like a half a second seems like a minute. It seems it's like, like yeah. oh, nothing's going on. I got to say something real quick. You right don't. Away. Sometimes, like you say, you got to let it breathe. Let it marinate. In let the it marinate. Air. Let the let the moment happen. Um, you know, because there are some comics I'm working with are finally getting to the point where the confidence in the material, so they actually go into a uh, a moment. Another bird has become the scene right. of the joke. Like, hey, my wife always does this, and then becomes the scene with his wife. And you can't be worried about the silence because I'm not going to tell you the payoff is good unless it's good. Right. So just trust that it's going to pay off and uh, and it's going to work. And the silence is the hardest part in stand-up because we're always afraid. That's our most vulnerable thing because, right. like, oh, it's silent. Oh, no, they're not laughing. Oh, no, I'm not speaking. Yeah, but that's the point where they go, oh, okay, boom, and, right. and, and land. The joke lands harder. And if they're quiet, they're listening, which means you're set up to the to the punchline. Right. Should if it's a good joke, will be a home run. It will land. You it, know, they're laughing through the whole thing. They're missing what you're saying. Right. So here's that's, a, that's a bad thing. Here's either, a little tip, or Rudy, for you new guys. When somebody gives you an eight minute set, go up with six minutes of material, because then you're not rushing through everything that you have, and you can take your time. And when you do your material at home. You're, you're not including uh, maybe some improv that happened or audience reaction. So hopefully that other two minutes, because you're relaxing, will be filled with laughter, improv, and... Uh... Actually, I'm sorry. I said the second. The third contest was the one at the Broadway where you were... Yeah, uh, man. You kicked judge. ass. And what a difference from one contest yeah. to the next to the next. And I bring that up because I actually am going to be in another contest on March 23rd where? at the Loft. Oh, the Loft. Again, Butera, Aragonis, Okay. Uh, so hopefully I will have experienced that much more by then and be able to. Am I headlining really, that? I don't know. I think I'm. I think I'm in that one. I'm not I'm sure. I'm not sure because I didn't see what the lineup was. I just right. know, uh, I put the interest out there. And see. to warm up, watch first. I will be at Governor's Little Room with Terry McNeely in his show. Thank you, Will. He said uh, Paul's good at reading the person in their yes. own voice. And Frank, just like sex, the first time. You rush it. Oh, uh, no. and, and Jeff has no clue who or what he is. So <laughs> maybe you can help Jeff out too. Well, Jeff, come to the class, man. It's a lot of fun. The, the, the biggest thing, and you can vouch for this, the biggest thing about the, the workshop, nobody feels judged. Nobody, no. the, the atmosphere is loose. Um, everybody brings what they want to to throw against the wall. Everyone throws out ideas. There's like six comics in the room plus myself. I'm like the conduit. And everybody's giving suggestions. It, it's the coolest three hours, because it's three hours. You hang out the entire time that you can have on a Thursday night. And, um, and well worth it. It's 40 bucks. It's not that much money. And you know what? You walk out <laughs> with stuff that you, had, you didn't have when, before you walked in. So I only take seven comics a class. I'm just laughing at John's comment. What do you say? <laughs> Do I wear long for the show? He's such a he's such a dick, and that's why he's funny. He is. He's the, got me already. So already. I'm already a fan. He already. <laughs> we have John and I have such history. It, it's ridiculous. Um, and and there's a CD that I have of us doing outtakes from a sketch that I had on my first CD about him coming in to pick out ladies' lingerie. <laughs> And I think it was for Valentine's Day, am I right? Yeah. And uh, and because he wants to get a little anal. That's the, that's the punchline. They hear the record scratch and this right. whole store goes silent. And he goes, all right, I think this uh, this has anal on it. You know, this this little outfit here. And you see hangers. Yeah, hangers vigorously going across. But it was a start. We had so many outtakes, though. It was, it's a, someday I'll have to put it up on my website. That's not a bad idea, Frank. Wait a second. He wants to use the experience for sales. Um, oh, because Frank is that's a true. very witty guy. He's right. Quick. I think he personally, I think he would do well as a comic, but he I, he doesn't really want to do that, or maybe right. he just needs a little product. To, to yeah, but you know what? It's, it's but true. But for sales, it will help. It's great time. for public speaking. The classes. In fact, you and Teresa came. Right. Before you did your first so uh, no, she, show, she was real nervous. She's never really done anything like this before. And I'm I, glad I did it too because I was just going to just wing it. Right, like, right. <laughs> well, the cool thing was I put them up in the front of everybody and they sat like they would at a podcast and I just kind of gave them the, some fluid to get to get it going and they just started talking like they were doing a podcast. Right. And you, it was great because you wound up having subjects to talk about for your first show and it didn't seem contrived. It didn't seem like you were forcing anything. So. Right. 
It was good. It and was we, good. we started out with a bunch of huge guests right off the bat, which made it easy, too. Yeah. Mira, Mike Keegan, right. Richie Byrne, you, you know. Right. Our first few shows were really, like, all home runs for a bunch us. bunch of big mouths that you that were that, you know could <laughs> carry could carry their own. So yeah. it's not like that we had to worry about is this guest going to be a stiff, you know? Right. Because you know that well, with an interview, the interview could be as great as possible. If the guest is just dull, yeah, it's really hard to bring that home. If you're just getting yes or no answers, and that's why the king of interviews will always be Johnny Carson. Yes, he will always. I mean, the potato chip lady. I don't know if you've ever seen that classic potato chip well, lady. Shaped like different, sh- shape like different yeah. things. And then he pulled up a potato chip from a, while she was getting another one. He pulled up a potato chip from a bowl that she didn't see and crunched it. And she turned around, almost had a heart attack. And it was the funniest thing because he's friggin' brilliant. He knows how to make anybody funny. And he knows how to get it out of you. And if you watch Carson, these old interviews... He's so intense. He's so like, yeah, yeah. And he's really listening. Right. He's not trying to one up you. He's not trying to be funnier than you. He's just brilliant at interviews. I think that's lost because the late shows now are just they're yeah. not what they were. You know, no, people are going not. out there. They're trying to be comics I, doing their stick, right. or they get overly political, or they just right, want to outshine their guests. Like right. you said, Johnny was a star because he. Wasn't a star, you know. Because what I mean? he wasn't insecure. He, wasn't he trying, knew yeah. he was going to be funny in the time right. he was supposed to be funny. Right. He didn't have to be funny in your time. He had time. his monologue. He had his skits yeah. and stuff. But when he did the interview, it was right. about that person. It was about that person, exactly. And he and knew if, his stuff too. He I made mean, Robin Williams. He lit the fuse for Robin, and he just ran around the place like a maniac. And he loved every yeah. second of it. He didn't care if you turned his show into the Robin Williams half hour at that point. Didn't care. And if things went awry, like with uh, Burt Reynolds. And Al, oh, the guy from uh, the Double Dare. Uh, Double Dare. They, they actually were spraying whipped cream. whipped cream and everything. And then Johnny just got into it and turned what really could have been, which was a tense situation, yes. turned into a classic funny moment. <sighs> so Turned it into a Laurel and Hardy moment. He really did. With the whipped cream and right. then put it down his pants. and then Hysterical. But he was, he was a genius at that. Yeah. Um, and not much of that goes on. It's just... They're so interested in what they are. The, the host is so interested in what they have to say that they forget that it's about the person you brought on, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Lacey and Frilly. That was the name of the bit on my CD. John just said, Lacey, it was Lacey. I'm looking for something Lacey and Frilly. <laughs> you know, like he he's such a character. He's a voiceover guy, John. He was in um, Transformers 2. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. he played all the kitchen utensils, <laughs> and he played... The doctor who actually pulled, pulled and pushed uh, Shia LaBeouf's nose and pulled out something. I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember what the hell it was, but he was actually in the guy's living room doing the uh, who did those movies. I don't really. Know, well, I don't remember his name. I'm having a, not, yeah. a brain fart. But it was a really cool thing, and I saw John's name come up at the end of the movie, and I'm like, oh man. A little tear came to my eye, got to be honest. That's great. When, I, you, when I, your buddy makes it, it's, it's just so cool. I really want to step it up, but it's tough, as you see, with my job, too. It's just, you know. Oh, no, it's hard. And, and the one thing that they do show, and I know from, I, I go to Pauline Murphy a lot because she posts a lot of what she does. She's out there every day hitting three or four shows, open yeah. mics, this area. Yeah. It's really, really hard yeah, to is. get off the ground. And, and even, um, I, I just... I don't understand it. Uh, there are really, really funny people out there that have what it takes to, to just go all the way. <laughs> and for whatever reason, it's the it right time. Happen. It's the right and, person. And I try to figure that out because, yeah. again, you take someone like Ray Romano, and I know Rich Walker, and a lot of people were right. in that scene at that time. Sure. He got picked. Right. Yeah. Kevin James, yeah. he helped along. And again, well, Ray, that, well, Ray got picked because of Letterman. He killed on Letterman. Yeah. And Letterman and, and gave what, him his own show. And that's why I br- brought that up. They would think, if you got on Carson, if you oh, got on Letterman, yeah. if you got on these shows, you were done. You were set. In the day. And done in a good way. Like, your, your work was over. Now it was a, a free ride almost. You get this from Carson, or you get to call yeah, over to the, the chair. Call over. What is You're there made. now? You're made. Is there anything now? That, Tim Saturday Allen, Roseanne is- Barr, Drew Carey, Tim, uh, Eddie Mer- all these guys got the call over to the chair and got their own TV show. Because once Carson gives you the okay... That was it. That's all you need. It there's, was like there's no more it was like the night shows like that. You know? No, Saturday Night Live's not that catapult anymore. 
there's no guy like Rodney Dangerfield doing his thing anymore. Because again, if you were on the Young Comedian special on Rodney Dangerfield, yeah. he went and picked funny people yeah. and propelled their career. It wasn't like, hey, how many people can you bring? Right. He knew what funny was, or what funny was to him at least, and he pushed them. What is there now? Is there anything like that? There's nothing really because it's so saturated. The, 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 the comedy is all over the place, and, and what happens is... It gets kind. Of, I don't. I hate saying this, but <clears throat> when you got so many comedy shows, the cream can't rise because it's so watered down. Okay, that there's, makes sense. There's, you know, it's so watered down, and unless you're at a level already, um, like a you know a David Tell and a Jeffrey Ross who bumping mics on Netflix is a that killer. That was great. You killer. I watched on your on your recommendation. <laughs> um, yeah, was... Once you're at those that level <laughs> already, it's really hard. Now, because, oh, yeah, you get your own Netflix special. No, no, you don't just get your own Netflix special. You need somebody to help you. Um, like my friend Paul Verzi just had his first Comedy Central special because of Bill Burr, who we opened for. Not saying Paul didn't break his ass to get to that point, but he had the right guy. You know, right. He had the tool, the mechanism to make it happen. And that's what that's I know what sometimes this it's about. a viral YouTube video, like Vicky Potato had the bread and milk thing. And then some guys just come, I don't want to say come out of nowhere, because again, he was working his ass off and sure. doing the scene, but Sebastian Maniscalco yeah. now is like top yeah. level. You saw what his tickets were going for at the Garden, and he sold out to an ad at shows. I know. I, and I'm, look, I'm like, wow, it's for a comedy yeah. show? Like, good for him for getting it. I, I know. No, definitely not a knock on him. And please, I hope he gets 10 times that, so at least maybe I'll make some money in the future. <laughs> The trick is there any trickle down to that's what Manis, I'm hoping, Maniscalco's you know, pay? So yeah. maybe I can make a couple hundred bucks a night if I he's know. making, you know. But it's just four shows at the Garden. Sold four. out. Four. I, I, I mean, it was a big deal when Dice sold out the Garden. It was huge because comedian. I did, did it. it for ten nights. And then then yeah. um, Dean Cook came and he yeah. sold back to back shows. Yeah. At, everyone kept yeah. stepping it up and stepping it up. Now, now you're selling out the Garden at these prices. Yeah. And it's just. Bill Burr did it twice. And I'm a big fan of Burr, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's for me. Um, for me, Bill Burr is like the the new Carlin. Everyone says no, Louis C.K. No, Bill Burr. He's the guy that tweaks you and goes, "Oh my God, where's he going with this?" Right. You know, even though Louis C.K.'s bit about Parkland was, you know, I thought it was pretty funny. People are so See, sensitive. You can't talk about it. Like Bill Burr was doing a bit about the the military, he made fun of the military. And some guy in the back, you, some fat guy came running up to him. You make it, you can't make fun of the military. He goes, why? We got to greet them now? He goes, I know. We can't make fun of the military. We got to greet them when they come over at Delta. You know, <laughs> we got to stand up and say hi. But the bit was about, you know, not everybody's a hero in the military. Uh, the guy flying the bomber and taking hits, you know, from the, from the ground, he's a hero. Right. But the guy that points on the ship for where he takes off to, it's kind of watered down the definition of hero from this guy to the guy it, it, actually it, <laughs> flying the plane. You're right, though. Everyone's got so sense. If Louis C.K. made those jokes about whatever happened 20 years ago, people would be lining up to see him. Right. But now, because he had a Me Too moment, you know, he's Louis C.K. Yeah. He's done. Yeah. It's going to take a long time for him to be able to and, come and, back. And the guy was a fan of Louis. You could tell he was. That's why he yeah. posted it. But he burned all that material. See, when you're. When you're when you say burn the material, that means you can't use it again because it's already been heard by everybody because it was downloaded or uploaded or whatever. And poor Louie lost his entire new show because of this this whole thing. And, and again, I've heard mixed stories of what actually happened, but the first version I heard was that he invited women back to his hotel room, asked to masturbate. Asked them. They said yes, permission. he they did it. Yes. And then <laughs> like months later, they, they were offended because they felt pressured Except from, for Sarah Silverman. And from what I've heard, <laughs> from people like Sarah Silverman, who've done interviews, <laughs> yeah. people said Louis was very well known for that, and he was not pushy. He would ask you if you said no, he accepted it he and walked backed away. Off. So, and this, is, this was before he was Louis. Right. I mean, this was... He always was known for He being, was just a, head, a headliner, right. and this is what he liked to do back at the condo or hotel. So... It wasn't like he had the power over you. Right. So, you know... So, I mean, if he did other stuff that I don't know about that was... No, it was sexual much, assault or whatever, then fine. From then what I heard, it was just that. But if it, it was, was just that, that then I, I don't see it. But just like, um, wow, I had the name before, too, and it just escaped me. The guy who does The Talking Dead, the comedian that does The Talking Dead, 
Oh. Via no knows it. Put it out there for a second. He had a problem? Yeah. It was funny because an ex-girlfriend of his wrote something. It's not Chris Hardwick. Uh, Chris Hardwick. An ex-girlfriend wrote something about an, an ex-boyfriend of hers that did all this bad stuff. And immediately, like, everyone got so worried. He got, I don't know if he got fired or suspended. And then his current girlfriend, and I think even the ex was like, no, that's not him. That's not oh. how he does it. Oh, Jesus. So... People went nuts, and they're like, we're not going to watch The Walking Dead or The Talking Dead if you don't oh, give this guy a show no. back. He didn't do anything. Oh, my God. So, luckily, it was, like, in an off part of the season. Because she wasn't specific as to who right. he was talking so about. So, now all it takes is an accusation from an ex, not even about you, no. to get you in trouble now. And that's, it's just, it, yep. it ruins yep, Chris real issues. Because there are people who did really bad things, right. like Harvey Weinstein. Right. And, and, you know, that's proven. What are you saying, uh, Bobby Collins, John, John Crosta? You're talking about uh, Maniscalco, I guess. I guess that's the parallel he was drawing. He goes, I liked it the first time when it, he was called Bobby Collins. <laughs> Who's still out there, by the way? Another veteran. These and veterans are still out there being funny. Come on, somebody wake up. I, put I a think show together. someone, you need, a, you need a modern day danger fields. Yeah. But for, for guys who have been doing it. For, yeah. for both. For, yeah. for new up-and-coming comics that are really funny right. and deserve to be there, but mainly headlined by yeah. the guys who belong there. and have Right. Like Gotham Comedy is, uh, is the show to be on now locally uh, to get some, you know, get some notoriety out of it. And, uh, but it, you know, there's not that one show that where you go, hey, I'm going to be on so-and-so, and the next step is this. Right. It does not that show anymore. Because I see people like even within their first year, and you and you look, and they got Carolines and Dangerfields yeah. and The Tonight Show and this that and the other, and they got all these. Well, let's credits. put it this way: back in the day, and I, I'm not saying they're not funny, but like no, no, <clears throat> you know, in your first year, yeah. I, I mean, I'm glad they do it. I'm glad there's promoters right. that put on shows with you. Because when I when I went to Dangerfields, it was iconic to be in a place like that. Right. And Carolines was great. You know, these sure. places like I remember watching people. You know, when I was. The, the greats were there, and I was a fan of them, and like, wow, I'm on the same stage that they were. You know right. what I'm saying? But, and again, I was during amateur nights sure. or whatever. It wasn't like I was a big headline show on 8 o'clock on a Friday night at 10 o'clock. Right. I'm not saying that. But there needs to be a place that's just like a, a, a there needs to be a modern day Dangerfields, a modern day Tonight Show. With Johnny Carson. Well, the place that kind of puts... like, hey, this is where yeah. the cream of the crop are. I, can, I think... The place that's really putting people on the map is the comedy cellar. Like that seems to be the place where it's such an underground thing, but guys like Ray Romano will show up and Chris Rock and uh, Louis C.K. Like that's if if anybody of that stature is going to go out and work out material, it's at the comedy cellar. Right. So they have that kind of um, cachet. Um, but again, these are guys that already made it. So they're just working out stuff, yeah. you know, and uh, it's the toughest. The toughest thing is coming up with your next hour, and what people don't realize it's you know Elvis Costello, one of my favorite musicians, said the best thing about music. He goes, uh, "You have your entire life to write your first album. You have a year and a half to write your next one." It's true, you know, yeah. and it's like, Bleh. yeah, right. So once you put out a DVD and or put out a special. For... Now they're going to come see you, and they're going to go, well, no, we already saw that. So why are we coming to pay money to see that again? So you got to keep working out stuff. And what the audience doesn't realize, when you're working out stuff, it's not all going to be top-notch. No, it's, it's, that's why you're working it out. That's you, the whole point. You're working it. out the, the bumps and all you're that stuff. You're probably doing five hours of material to cut down to that great hour for a special, right? Right, right. exactly. You know. you're, you're working it all out. Like tonight... There's uh, open mics in different places. <laughs> this, this is our pinup tonight, by when the way. John, John says, are there going to be pinups tonight because my pants are on my ankles and I still look foolish here at the Jiffy Loop? <laughs> you got to let me know when he's lost. Gotta... <laughs> ah. ah, John. All right. Well, at least you got the lube. <laughs> no, I actually, the pinup isn't here, and I'm very disappointed. Uh, Teresa's sick, and uh, so I, I called up Dennis. I'm like, I'm running late because I do animal rescue work during the day, and uh, we had this thing going on, blah blah blah. So anyway, and you need some panic or anything. Okay, all right, yeah. you'll be here at ten two, whatever. Not telling me, 
Try to get here as soon as you can because Teresa's not coming. You know what? I, I, you got to roll with it. I if know. you weren't here on I time, so. I would have <laughs> given them word that Paul gets <laughs> Mike him up and send him in. I just would have made something up and just started going with it. He's such a silly guy. And guess. that's what I like, too. And that's why, and I know you and every pro comic that have come in here or that I've spoken to all say the same thing. Get as much stage time as you can. Yeah. doesn't matter where or how or whatever. Because the more I do it, the yeah. more comfortable I am yeah. and the more willing. Like in the beginning, when I first started, someone goes, oh, you want to get up and do a few minutes? Ah, I wasn't ready. I didn't have anything to Yeah. Pay. Now it's like, you want to get up? Sure. Yeah, go. What are you about? I don't know. Exactly. If I'll it, make something up as I go and, you know. It may happen at a family party. Paul, you want to do yeah, yeah, I'll do a few minutes. Whatever. I don't care. Give me give me the forum. I'm doing yeah. it. Um, I am guilty of uh, not writing a lot of new stuff lately. So I am, I've been bad, too, and I yeah. really need to. Cause it's like I got to get new songs. And I like people, my song stuff is usually the same, so. I gotta, I gotta start writing in, and I came up with some really good ideas. Uh, brown eye girl, he goes, we know what the brown eye is, and uh, and I would say, hey, where did we go? You know, you sl slipped in the wrong hole. You know, like, yeah. and then brown eye girl. <laughs> of course, it's always a dick joke. Why not? That's my show. Um, and there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, again, in today's people are offended by everything, but again, like, like they said, if you. With Louis C.K., when people get offended by what he said, if you were there, you don't really have the right to be offended because <laughs> right. at this point, you know who he is. It's not like you got surprised and go, oh, my right. God, an offensive comment. Right. You go to see Dice Clay and you're offended by his right. nursery rhymes. He's not going to talk place. about puppies and yeah. kitty cats. Exactly. Exactly. He's going to be talking about these gay guys. You know, uh, John <laughs> Reynolds rap called. They, they want, want their backdrop. Back. I had to look up to see what he was talking about. That does kind of look like that. Looks like either that or it looks like a frozen scene. Like it looks like ice okay. behind us. <laughs> Speaking of which, we're going to get a little in weather. Say, yeah. Uh, you got to love these weathermen with their turbocharged dual Dopplers, anywhere uh, from nothing to a lot. Or What do we got? <laughs> what are they saying? Well, last I heard mentions? around here, it's going to be one to two before it changes over to rain. Okay. But we are getting rain, and it is going to be 40 degrees the next day, so yeah. it's a nothing. It's a nothing. But schools are closed already. They're, they're closed yes. already? I was watching TV before I came here, and I saw certain schools had already canceled all the classes tomorrow. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's funny. One of my memories today was from a storm we had, and it was a bad storm, uh -huh. but I think it happened on a Thursday. Right. The schools were still closed on Monday and Tuesday <laughs> because hey, they were you still know, cleaning up the snow. I mean, They got is, lazy. We just, uh, we turned into a bunch spread of... spreading salt, and they got little Morton's containers. We got all this right technology, yeah, no. and we can't do anything for ourselves anymore, <laughs> including opening a school after a snow day. Okay, so we just roll brown eye, yeah. And I figured the course would be, ow, 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 you slipped. That's it. <laughs> brown eye girl. There you go. Um, I will be at the um, Cove Haven Resorts on Wednesday. On Valentine's Day Eve. I was going Day to ask you what you're doing for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day Eve, I will be at the uh, resorts in the Poconos. Um, the day after, I'll be home with my honey, Robert, and uh, we're going <laughs> to just nussle amongst the fire. Now, uh, my wife, Cheryl, who uh, we do the rescue work together, and uh, unbelievable. She's an unbelievable woman. It's it's everybody before her. She's crazy. She's, uh, she's a very good woman. And uh, John DeCroster will vouch for that, so you'll see. That'll come up. Jeff said it's up uh, to five inches that we're getting now before it changes. Right. Five inches? Right. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's that old joke. <laughs> he feels it coming already. He's like, no, don't go there. And the, uh, it's about as accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's about, it's about as white man accurate <laughs> yeah. as you get. You get anywhere from zero to 12, yeah, probably more it. towards the three to five. That's what I say. When a woman <laughs> says she was hurt by 12 inches of white stuff, that was snow when she was in a car accident. Yes. That's right. Um, so anyway, yes. Yeah, so this Wednesday, Cove Haven. This Friday, like I said, I'm going to be at round two uh, in Bohemia, on Vets Highway, and we're doing an animal rescue benefit to raise money to pay for vet bills and whatnot. And like I said, it goes right to it. There's no red tape. It goes from me right to the bill. That's that's how easy it is. And I will vouch for that. And that's why Frank, uh, Frank's been of saving grace. Dennis, I mean, the people, I know the people that are there for me. They also know when I post, it's not bullshit. So it's definitely something. And uh, if you follow him, you'll see when he's going around. and. Yeah, you know what? I might just stuff. have people start bringing uh, dry cat food to gigs. 
You know, if you want, like, Toys for Tots, yeah. start bringing food to the show. So if you got, hey, hey, I grabbed a bag on the way over, I'll take it, you know, because that's the way it works. Um, I told my wife, you're only getting five inches, but if you rub it the right way, you'll get six. <laughs> Anyone? All right. So, uh, John, John, where are you going to be? So people, I mean, in your area can come see you. John does a lot of cruise ships. He's the only guy, only comic I know that does cruise ships and gets more fit. Really? Every comic that does cruise ships comes back like 40 to 60 pounds heavier. Because all you're doing Unlimited is, food. And yeah, then you it's sit eating in room. all day long. You sit in your room. John, when they go to port, he's skateboarding. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's working out in the gym. He eats kale. He's disgusting. I see uh, Margo just tuned in. She is a friend of Frank and Sarah's. Uh huh. She's a firefighter, model, actress, whatever. Wow. She, she's going to be on the show in March, so. Wow. Hi to you. Hey, Margo. She's Miss March in her calendar Ready to go. as well. So. The, stale, the stairs and salad bar are always empty. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, John. That's why you Spot can do on. it. <laughs> Very good. So anyway, uh, so and Sunday, like I said, I'm doing a benefit at the Bolton Center in Bayshore. It's a beautiful little theater, about 200 seater, and it's uh, for a veteran with um, post traumatic stress disorder who suffered from it. But he's doing a walk from Buffalo to Long Island. I don't know why he's doing it in March, which is freaking nuts. Because I don't even want to walk from my car to my. Oh my God! And he's doing it in the snow. Are you shitting yeah. me? Um, but we're raising money for the documentary. It's to support veterans, homeless vets. And uh, he's going to be interviewing honestly, a lot, homeless vets on there. A lot is not done for the homeless vets in no. this country, so someone you know, needs to stop. I don't want to get political, stuff. but we should be worrying about our own first. Yeah. Let's just put it and that even, way. And even, you know, I mean, they, when, when they signed to that check with their life, yeah. they, they were willing to give the life of this country. The country should not turn its back on them, they, regardless of politics or who it's going right, to. Right. You know, there should be no such thing as a homeless vet. No, ever. They should be in the hospital that they need to or be in. Or a vet that's not giving, or, getting the right medical care. You know, you see these stories, how they're deployed overseas, and then they lose their house. Yeah. How? How is that even possible? It shouldn't be. It should be taken care of. It should be yeah. a given. All right? We waste a lot of money on dumb, you know, researches. You know, we're going to research how the moth prolificates in this degree weather. Why? Who cares? Take care of the vets. We got, we got problems. Yeah, what they just say, like processed sugar and all this stuff is, is unhealthy. They just did a study on that. We already knew that. We knew that. We know Take that. Take that money and put these people in, in homes or hospitals, whatever they belong. The, the, the health care system is horrible for them. Yeah. Uh, ask a lot of people that died waiting to be seen by the VA, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, Frank, I know, Frank. I agree, and I'm not going to say it. Uh, <laughs> my other show that I'm working on, uh -huh. we will be talking about stuff like that. Okay, good. I'm working on a second show. Okay. Uh, which is going to be, because this is more of a uh, entertainment show sure. where we focus on our guests and everything. I'm going to do another show just talking about... Uh, issues. Issues. Yeah. Not necessarily politics, but politics may come up, but it's just like today's issues, because uh, there are a lot of them. Because I don't care if you're right wing, <laughs> like left wing, or buffalo wing. There's, they're there's all a, messed a up. a lot of confused... <laughs> Confusing things, yes. uh, like for example, an all-girl Boy Scout troop. Yeah, what is that? I, I don't understand. So uh, I am going to join the Girl Scouts tomorrow, right? Because I want free cookies and eat a brownie. That old joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I know I heard that there's an all-girl Boy Scout troop. Now I understand that the Boy Scouts might do more fun activities than the Girl Scouts do. But why not just enhance Apply the them Scouts? to the Girl Scouts. Yeah, have the Girl Scouts go out on uh, camping trips and learn how to tie knots and stuff. Why do they have to be with I, the I, boys? I, I, I don't understand why. You know what? Everyone can be create equal, but there still are differences between things. Boys learn to, learn to need to be boys. Girls learn to need to learn to be girls. Right. If you're an other and you want to learn to be an other, that's cool too. I don't care. But sometimes you want to be around like. Especially when you're growing up. You want to be up. around like. Especially yeah. growing up, you want to be around like people. And sure. even as adults, sometimes the guys just want to hang out, the girls sure. just want to hang out, guys night out, girls night out. I don't see what's wrong with that. Why does everyone need to interject themselves into something where it they're not just gets more and more or PC. don't belong at that time? Now there's something called gender fluid, where they wake up, they feel like a girl one day, a boy one day. I think gender fluid is liquor, right? Well, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. 
But uh, just shoot your gender fluid and shut the <laughs> fuck up. How about that? Uh, have a great night. Okay, bye, Jeff. Um, we are running out of time, and I see you brought your guitar. Do you want to play anything? Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you don't have to. I just... Uh, I know. Yeah. I brought it just in case. All right. Now, we can continue talking yeah. about uh, whatever. Let's see. Maybe maybe, so maybe one. All right. I was going to say, besides your workshops, what's your suggestion for somebody who might want to start in comedy? Um, attend open mics. That's Don't have to go up. Just go. And, uh, and, and see what's out there. Thanks, Jeff. Take care. See what's going on. Oh, it went out of tune. Hold on. Not good. Hold on. Uh, he tuned it up before the show. I witnessed it. Yeah, I got new strings. and <laughs> It's worse. You try to do the right thing. Keep talking. <laughs> I'll be with uh, you. So anyway, Paul is multi-talented. Not only is he a comedian, but he's also a musician. Hell? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how loud it is. Who toured with Jim Brewer. I just uh, I toured with Brewer. Play guitar And for we him. worked uh, with Metallica, ACDC. Did the roast of Dennis Leary. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> John wants you to play his favorite song. What's that? John said, play my favorite song. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I'll leave that up I don't to know you. which it. I don't know what it is. And hopefully this, it'll stop stretching. Is it something by Airship Productions, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know. <laughs> Wow, I don't, even, I, I don't even remember half those songs. We did some awful music. We did the Rusty Trombone. Yes, I remember yes. that very well. I this was a is, huge O&A fan. And if you were an O&A fan back in the day, huh? if you were an O&A fan, I'm telling them, if they were an oh. O&A fan back in the day, you've heard this guy before, too. Yeah, I, I used to Thank, do some song parodies for them. Once a year by the Bulls. Paul McCartney uh, was dating the... I don't know if he's still with her, the girl with the wooden leg. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, we, we, I saw her leaning there. <laughs> it's awful. I know it is. It's not right. Uh, John's favorite song. Oh, you, we well, want to Frank, do... Frank's is by the balls. Oh, so. <laughs> I just tuned. He goes, that was it. Oh, all right. <laughs> by the balls. This is the female national anthem. Yeah, this is too long. <laughs> yeah, let, me, <laughs> let me do... Um, yeah, because you only got a couple minutes, so... <coughs> uh, let me do... I saw a guy... I saw a guy on a, a black Harley, and he had white leather tassels streaming from his handlebars. <laughs> Remember streamers on a tricycle? Yes. He had them on his Harley. <laughs> and I was thinking, what could be the song going through this guy's head as he rides down the road of life on his Harley with streamers? So I came up with the... Born to be fabulous. <laughs> Get your motor running. Up my Hershey Highway. That's it. And a dick joke is born. <laughs> I'm a genius, Dennis, because yes. I left the word highway in there. I didn't even change it. I turned it into a dirt road. Yes. I turned it into a dirt road. That's right. <laughs> uh, what's the other? Oh, yeah, I had another quickie. Uh, I can't remember what I've already done on your show. That's what kind of stinks. Yeah, do it again anyway. Um, yeah, give us one more quick one, then promote yourself again. And we'll, all right, uh, we'll do... Um, all right, this is uh, Sting, if he was a father in India. Sting, if he was a father <laughs> in India. Here we go. There's a little red dot on my son today. That's it. The same old dot. <laughs> It was yesterday. I read that on my son. Um, let yes. them know where they can find you and your stuff. Okay. PaulBondComedy.com. My tour dates are down for now because somehow Google has taken my personal calendar and brought it into my tour date calendar. So you know but, what the gynecologist yeah, appointment is and it's everything. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, you get to see when I'm going to the gynecologist. Um, and uh, this, uh, yeah, PaulBondComedy.com. Also, watch for the Rock and Roll Comedy Tour with myself, uh, Dennis Blair, and Gary Delina. Ooh. 
Uh, and uh, three veterans of comedy come together with guitars and join comedic forces for the Rock and Roll Comedy Tour. Go to my uh, Facebook page and uh, you'll see it uh, there. Definitely check him out. It's definitely worth it. Uh, One of the funniest guys around. Thank you. And like I said, Friday, Bohemia. All this will be posted after the show. I'll re-up everything so they can see. Okay. Uh, for and donate to his charity. Thanks yes. again, Frank, and everybody at the Irish Pub. Hopefully you're winning at darts tonight. Uh, thanks for that donation. Yes, thank you and very much. check out Frank. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll find out from David if he's going to be on there before I push that. But, uh, yeah, buy Paul CDs, too. They go toward rescue. And hit up for our sponsor, Kayla Logistics. Well, your business is our priority. Moving products you use every day across the country and around the world. Contact Frank Zambuto for all of your domestic and international logistic projects. Uh, we already know Frank has over 20 years' experience. I'm just going to sum like this I'm up for time. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> drinking water while you're talking. Go ahead. At 347-536-3933. <laughs> Frank at klogistics.com. If you have any questions about tariffs or anything like that, he has the answers. Call Frank right now. And we will see you next week. Thanks for having me. You guys are awesome. See you on the road. Toodles.